guys, welcome to another Rage Shadow Legends Champion Guide. I'm glad to have you here today. We're going to take a look at Vlad the Nightborn, the super, super, super crappy, underwhelming Void Legendary Champion for a while until he got a quite significant buff a few months ago from the time of this recording at least. So today we're going to go ahead and review him and I also have champion lore for this champion that we'll be sharing uh, midway through the video with you guys. So stay tuned for that as well. Pretty good lore story for Mr. Vlad. Also, I'm going to have a, a shout out to Phil Johnson. Great guide. Thank you. I don't know which video you're referring to, but I appreciate that. would love to see a guide on the new improved Vlad for PvE. We also have a lot of people wanting to see Vlad and Constantine, which you will see, of course, in today's video. But we'll cover even more Vlad and Constantine on the Constantine, the Dayborn guide, coming up soon to a channel near you. Uh, we have Chris Sr. Hey, I just love the channel. Plus, Skafix this past week during the Kale event. So, really appreciate this. Oh, the, the, the Skafix video is already up for you guys. Uh, I also happened to get Vlad the Constant and Constantine. Ooh, was wondering if you could do a guide because I'm sure of what content they would be good in together. Uh, and then Chris again asking for another one. So, big shout out to Chris. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the, uh, the, the guide here, guys. And uh, we'll cover the lore in just a little bit. A lot of you guys want me to just like slow build these champions, and if you don't care about it, you can fast forward to the uh, you know the portion of the video where we actually play test them as well. But I'm gonna you know build him, rebuild him, all of his accessories, all of his uh, artifacts. I'm gonna redo all of his masteries as well. He is fully booked. We'll talk about the book and you know what, should you book him now? Should you remove him from your vault? I can already tell you the answer is probably gonna be yes for a lot of you guys. This was a very substantial buff in my opinion. So let's just talk about what the buff was essentially. It's really reworking not just his uh, his aura, excuse me, his crit rate now in all battles. It used to be, what did it used to be? It used to be like 21% uh, in certain battles. I don't know what the heck it used to be, but it, you know, either way, 24 in all battles is not bad. But really, the main change here is Mind Shroud. This is his A3 ability. So they made it in AoE, right? It used to be a attack one target two times. Eh, kind of a worthless ability, right? He used to have an AoE on his A2, which was his best ability, but now he's got two AoEs both on a three-turn cooldown. Let's quickly review his entire kit. Attacks one enemy on his Thirsting Blade A1, destroys the target's max HP by 30% of the damage inflicted, also heals his champion by 30% of the damage inflicted. Nice kind of heal built into his A1, which is very hard hitting. It has a four multiplier. Shout out to hellhades.com. You can check out all the multipliers here, but a four godlike rating on that A1 is significant not just for the damage, but also the heal. Also a good option for an ally attack team, uh, counterattack, etc. His AoE multiplier on his A2 is 4.7, a godlike rating. And his AoE multiplier on the A3 now is a 4, a strong rating. And hats off to whoever's managing Hell Hades because they've already updated it and it just went live, you know, an hour ago from the time of this recording in terms of the new changes to Vlad. So now his A2 is, well, always has been, but it's a good A2. Attacks all enemies, 100% chance of placing a leech for two turns. Also has a 100% chance when booked of stealing 50% of the turn meter from champions from the Banner Lord, Sacred Order, or High Elf factions. 100% chance of decreasing turn meter by 50% instead against targets not in those factions. So on a three turn cooldown, we get a 50% turn meter reduction or a 50% turn meter steal, right? Really good in the arena, especially against waves, Doom Tower waves. Just a really good ability. Vlad has always been somewhat underwhelming. You can see the, the reviews are very mediocre, and I think those are pretty accurate. Ratings are sometimes really off in this game, but this is actually kind of, in my opinion, where he should be pre-buff. Pre-buff, I stress. Because now, check out this A3, an AoE attack, 100% chance of placing a decreased defense and a block active skills. Plays a perfect veil on the champion for two turns. And this is, again, all on a three-turn cooldown as passive. Plays a revive on death on the champion for two turns every time the champion kills an enemy. Fully heals the champion and fills the turn mirror by 50% every time they kill an enemy if Constantine's on the same team. Okay, so that's a lot. But again, two strong AoEs. One that basically, if I'm stealing... You know, 50% turn meter from two champions in the Banner Lord Sacred Order of High Elf, I get essentially close to back to back turns, a full turn meter fill on his A3. So if you're going against an arena team, for example, or a wave that happens to have a few Banner Lords, a few Sacred Order champions, High Elves, which are very popular factions, then you basically, again, get to come in here, place a leech on everybody, have a full turn meter, come back around, decrease defense, and block active skills on another hard hitting AoE attack. I mean, I don't need to tell you guys, but that's really, really powerful, right? In the arena, you can open up with Mind Shroud. You can lock everybody out, uh, block active skills, 
and be the debuffer as well. So we have control and debuff in the same ability on an AoE attack now. This is definitely way more deserving of being a Void Legendary than what he used to be. He was a below average Void Legendary before, even though he had some usage. Now, in my opinion, he's a maybe slightly above average uh, Legendary. Time will certainly tell there to see what niches we can find with this champion, what strengths we can find with this champion. And uh, even uh, Vlad and Constantine, we're going to run them together. Them being a meta combo... I could actually see that happening on some teams because if you look at Constantine's passive, basically he all of his abilities, he has two very hard hitting abilities. Constantine is companion champion. If Vlad's on the same team, he has a deny revival on everything. Like an Anithui Blood Twin type ability on his passive. That's a very, very powerful. So we're going to run them together and see what happens as well. So, okay, that's his kit. You guys know the buff. Let's go ahead and gear this dude out. So if you look at his base stats here, we can uh, see the HP right above my head here. 15k, very, very low, especially for a Void Legendary, even for an attack-based one. Extremely low, so we hate that. So not a lot of survivability on this champion. His attack, 1443, is high, but it's not that high, right? Good thing his multipliers are really, really good, so it scales pretty well. His defense, 1134. Again, very low, but not too bad compared to other nukers. So what he lacks in HP, he does make up to some extent on his defense based stats his speed 105 is very good very good for a uh, a debuffer slash kind of control champion with the block active skills keep in mind block active skills it can be you know resisted it can be cleansed so keep that in mind right uh and then everything else you know we'll, we'll scale it up so i want to build him as a control champion plus some uh a lot of ac so a lot of accuracy basically i want to land the a3 is what i really want to do and i want to steal turn meter so i want a ton of accuracy i'm going to build him for the arena specifically but we can use the build that we're going to use today anywhere as well but i do want to go really high on that accuracy and i want to go really fast on this champion because i want to run him on a speed team as again kind of a crowd control and debuffer all in one with like arbiter and constantine as the nuker okay so First things first, we're going to go ahead and start sorting. I should probably move myself over, flip myself around here, and uh, and be over here. I think it's a, a nicer place for you guys to look. So I'm going to go ahead and just do what I always do for the accessories. I'm going to click Equipped, and we're going to go with Attack as our main stat. Substat, we want Attack Percentage. Now, we already have a, a Legendary Ring here with a Trip Roll of HP. It's a flat stat. Believe it or not, guys, a flat stat HP not the end of the world because his HP scales so poorly on this champion, but I'm going to keep looking. I'm going to keep looking. I really want more attack on this champion. We have a, a, a one roll there, a no roll there. What do we have over here? Hey, we have a two roll attack. I'm going to go ahead and pick this one up. I'm going to, I'm going to save the silver, right? So we already have our ring picked out. Let's go ahead and go to, obviously we're going to go with crit damage on the amulet. We want to try to build him for some damage, right? But at the end of the day, too, we really want a lot of accuracy as a substat. That's our primary focus here because he's not going to be our main nuker. He's going to be a, uh, uh, you know, a debuffer with extra damage, having a nice to have type thing, right? So uh, let's see what we have here. We have a maxed out crit damage with 25 accuracy. This one, we oh, look at this, a rare, but we get a lot more accuracy, 39 from this amulet. Let's go ahead and use that one. Okay, so that's all looking good. It's all glyphed out. Nice, nice, nice. Let's go ahead and move right over to the banner. Biggest thing on the banner again is we're going to definitely go accuracy. We want to really maximize those champions accuracy. So primary stats, accuracy. Stub stats are going to be speed. We're going to go equipped. And why is my... You ever have like this kind of... This, this bug? Does it happen to any of you guys? I don't know. Happens to me sometimes. Like, what's going on here? Primary stat, accuracy, substats, speed, and... Oh, okay. Forget it. Forget it, guys! Forget it! <laughs> All right, so here's what we have at our disposal. We have... Look at me trying to blame the game. I'm like, you guys ever have Plarium? You suck! And I'm just like, okay, Ash, you're an idiot. Uh, accuracy with speed, well, dang. And the, uh, you know, the reaction. Uh, but Seeker, he's speed-tuned for my clan boss team, so I can't really touch him. All right, so let's go. We got accuracy with double speed, attack percentage. Oh, Scar Taurus is step aside, my friend. Uh, that's going to be an easy steal there. So we're going to swap. Hey, you know what? A little kind of side note, guys. Don't you wish there was a way? It didn't, it didn't pertain to that particular scenario. But don't you wish there was a way to swap artifacts? 
You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, if I wanted to steal, if I had Vlad fully equipped with, with artifacts, which I did before the video, and then I wanted to steal something from another champion, but I'd want to put whatever was on Vlad on that champion too without having to like make a mental note in, and go replace the gear on the champion that I removed it from. Shouldn't there just be a swap option? It won't cost extra silver. Uh, anyway, tangent over. I, I've, I've always been meaning to mention that little tiny quality of life thing, but I always forget to mention it. But here it is. It's, it's, uh, it's on my mind, fresh on my mind. So I'm going to go with, instead of going Savage or Lethal because we're not building him all out, Nuker, uh, we're just going to go Triple Perception. I think that Perception, uh, you guys have heard it a million times before, but I think it is the, the best set in the game, right? Uh, just in a vacuum. It's just two-piece. 40 accuracy, five speed. It's it's insane. Insane the value you get from perception. So it's another reason to farm your faction wars and uh, arena on a daily basis. So we want to go ahead and go to fitting room. We want to go to substance. And we want to think about speed and think about accuracy, right? So those are the two stats we really want to max out. So that's what I'm, all I'm going to choose for right now. We have a new artifact here. How that sneak in? Speed, crit rate, accuracy. Let's just see what we get here, guys. We get a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. You know what? Let's just use it. Got 16 million silver. That should be enough to, you know, max out, what? <laughs> Five artifacts. <laughs> it's really ridiculous how fast you can spend silver in this stupid game, man. All right, here we go. We get some attack, some accuracy. It's, it's looking good here. Let's just go ahead and, uh, and try it on. Let's try it on here. All right. Now the helmet, uh, let's see. Muckstalker I actually don't use anymore, and he's got some speed over there. Only one roll. Let's try this on for now. Let's try this on for now. Uh, Graybeard, no, no, no. Uh, let's see, Lorne. Ooh, that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice, but we actually lose speed on this. I like the crit rate, but we're not going for crit damage gauntlets on this champion, so let's just keep looking here. Not enough speed on that one. Uh, let's see. We get a double speed. Oh, you know what? Let's take this helmet. Let's take this helmet away from uh, uh, Sakara. Let's go to the shield. I don't want to mess with any of these champions like Ragash, Geo. Venomage and uh, and Yumeko are all in solid in the rotation, so I don't want to steal from them. We get speed and accuracy here, double speed roll. Okay, let's try this on. Let's see if we have anything maybe a little bit better though. We get one speed, no accuracy. That's whatever. Armagur I haven't been using lately. He's got one speed, one accuracy. Uh, you know what? It's a little bit better than what we have on right now. Let's put that on there, and then. Uh, Xavier, ooh, okay, we lose a little bit of speed, we really want to make sure we keep speed up, because we need to pace ourselves with, uh, with Arbiter on our team, who's our fastest champion, she's at like 357 speed, so we have a long way to go to get, uh, faster, you know, so we really could stand to get a lot of speed here, and I'm not seeing a lot of it, unfortunately, but, uh, let's see, what do we have here on my man, eh, Virgum Car. Thylesia, we actually use, so I don't really want to strip uh, her away. Eh, double accuracy, double speed, but I'm just not seeing any like crazy trip speed rolls, and I'm not going to sit here and make you wait for me to upgrade artifacts right now, so let's just go with Armager's shield. Sorry, Armager, we love you. Uh, let's see what we have here. HP percentage, I really want crit rate on the gauntlets. So let's go ahead and keep the same stubs, uh, sub stats, excuse me. Let's go crit rate, go gauntlets, and see what we have. Not a lot. Slim pickings. And frankly, I love all these champions, right? So let's see what Armager has first. He's got one accuracy, a little bit of speed. We have uh, Sigmund. He has nothing that's really going to help us a ton. We really don't want to even take this off of these champions at all. Ugh, but we get a quad roll of freaking accuracy on Yameko. Yikes, guys. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow it for the video. <laughs> but normally, I would not strip away Yumeko. All right, let's go to the chest here. Let's go primary stats. Uh, we're going to keep it attack. Or actually, we're going to go uh, uh, accuracy, excuse me. And we're going to go sub stats speed. Uh, we have 99%, by the way. I'll show you the stats that we have right now. 99% crit rate. So we are where we want to be in that regard. Our crit damage isn't even that bad at 149 right now. So I'm pretty happy with all that. Uh, 
our accuracy right now is at 468. So it's pretty high there too. So I'm actually really liking this build uh, so far. Let's see what I can get for an accuracy chest. So I have accuracy with one speed roll. What I really want is two speed rolls, uh, if at all possible. Let's go ahead and see what we get here. Three trip flat stat defense, exactly what we were not going for. Uh, let's go ahead and see what we can get here. And we get one speed roll again, kind of unlucky here. What do we have? A double crit rate there. We don't even need crit rate at this point. We get one speed. Shemnath has some crit rate. Allure has a trip speed, but we do not want to mess with Allure. She's too important on too many teams. So Molly, what do you have? Trip HP? Golly. Okay, Allure, we're going to borrow it again. We're going to borrow it. Here we go. All right. <laughs> so then let's go to the, the boots. And who knows? We have two Allures built, so... Maybe I can just swap. I don't use both allures anymore. I used to run them both. I think it was on a Fey team or another Spider team or something. But uh, I don't run them both anymore. So maybe I can just borrow some from the other allure and keep this chest on this champion. All right, speed boots. Obviously, we want substats accuracy. And let's see what we have here. We have one pair of boots that is not rolled. Attack percentage here too. Let's see if we can get you know some of this. Eh. We want a little bit more accuracy, but at this point, we're already pretty high on the accuracy. Let me just see what Nari is rocking. Eh, not a ton. Gurptuck, not a ton of accuracy, but I love the double crit damage roll. I'm actually going to take that because I do want to get a little bit higher. I'm getting greedy here. I want as much crit rate and crit damage as I can, even though we're not, you know, building him again necessarily to be our main nuker. All right, let me go ahead and flip myself around here and take a look at our Vlad now that we have no masteries on him, but we do have all the gear. So he's at 598, 267. I would like his speed to be higher, honestly, but I think this is going to be fine. Uh, so yeah, I actually like this build quite a bit. Uh, let me see if I can glyph out a speed. 19 plus 2. Yeah, I think, oh, right here, 14. So I'm not only going to use one glyph, speed glyph. I get three. I'll take it. That brings me up to 270. What was I at? 267? Yeah. All right. So not bad. And you're going to see how important Laura Steel is too. We're going to go ahead and unlock his masteries. And I'm actually going to go with... Well, this is interesting, guys. I was going to go initially with Eagle Eye to get him to 650 or higher accuracy. But... 658. But I think 608 is honestly going to be fine. So instead, I want my cake and eat it too. I'm actually going to go with uh, Helm Smasher on him. My, why not? Maybe he'll just kill. I want to see how, how much he can nuke. And I'm an idiot. I just went with crit rate and I don't need it. But it's not worth 150 gems, so whatever. I would have definitely went with Blade Disciple. I mean, I'm just not thinking. <laughs> but obviously, it's, it's a common mistake, right? If you don't need the crit rate, go with the attack instead, right? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Shield Breaker over here. I'm going to go with Ruthless, Ruthless Ambush, excuse me. I'm going to go with Master Hexer to extend the duration of the decreased defense. Now, does he have uh, the Leech is 100%, the Block Active Skills, and the Increased Defense all 100%, so I don't need Sniper on his A1. There was nothing that I need Sniper for, so that's totally cool. So really, these are all the, the these are all the Masteries that I really, really want here. I will pick up, uh, well, let me just see. I want bring it down, certainly. Increase damage with targets against targets with higher max HP. Uh, I do want... We're not going to be CCing in front of him, so I don't need Opportunist. So I think instead I will pick up Evil Eye. Uh, and then I'll come down to Kill Streak and come down to Helm Smasher. Uh, I'll pick up Methodical as well. So that's what we're going to go with for Masteries. If you need the extra accuracy... Nothing wrong with going Eagle Eye. Again, I originally intended to go Eagle Eye, but I don't think we need the extra accuracy. I think this is going to be fine. Uh, and then we were able to get two extra speed and about 20 or so extra accuracy, a little bit less, uh, uh, as well, thanks to Lore of Steel. So this is going to be our build, guys. Again, let me know if you like that. It was a long time <laughs> building that champion, but, you know, again, based on your feedback recently, a lot of you guys really enjoy that. And, you know, those who don't, 
and feel free to fast forward, right? All right, guys, so here we are in the arena. I'm excited about this team here, guys. We have, obviously, Vlad and Constantine together, but you don't need Constantine. You can run whoever you want as a nuker, but again, it's cool to have that block revive, so I figured I'd run them together. We have Ryan the Conjurer because I still want to include somebody on the team who has the ability to remove buffs from all enemies because there's so much stone skin in the arena, right? So I have Orion the Conjurer. She is built with around 500 or so accuracy, so not the most, but hopefully that will help us out. She also brings weak which obviously Vlad does not have. So I think these two champions actually complement each other pretty well. But before we do that, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the lore of Vlad the Nightborn. You can see him here in all his glory. Here we go. We get to cut some Constantine here as well. Uh, many years ago did this story begin. Two orphan sons of a proud but impoverished noble lineage were taken in by the Sacred Order to be educated and trained in the ways of Lumia. Constantine was a righteous soul who took to the sermons of the order with zealous passion. Yet Vlad chafed at the countless rules and regulations. He felt his spirit chained within the monastery, and his many escapades saw the young knight expelled in disgrace when he was only 20. For years, Vlad survived as a sellsword and nourished his reputation as a consummate and ruthless warrior until, at last, he caught the eye of a wealthy patron. The aging Duke Exed was the last of his line, though his hopes of rekindling the flames of his family's glory still smoldered until his last day. For good or ill, those hopes were doomed, and the, du and the Duke sank into melancholy as time continued its ruthless march. But he saw in Vlad a worthy servant, and when sickness threatened to take him, he summoned the young knight and bid him retrieve a relic, a sword that had been locked in the family crypt centuries ago. The duke believed it had the power to stay the hand of death somehow. Vlad was skeptical but agreed to honor the Lord's last witch wishes. With a handful of men-at-arms at his side, Vlad ventured into the mausoleum that lay amid the harsh mountains to the north. Finding the crypt was no easy task, but the catacombs beneath were devoid of traps or other dangers at a glance. Pleased with the errand was at an end, Vlad led his men to the deepest burial vault. Yet the moment they opened the sepulchre, a blood-chilling shriek pierced the silence. Ghouls rushed the small troops on all sides and overwhelmed them with the sheer weight of numbers. Vlad fought ferociously, but the foes were too many. Battered and wounded, his sword broken, he nearly succumbed to the undead horde. Then something had awoken in his heart, and following a primal impulse, Vlad seized the sword of Eskeds from the dead fingers of its previous owner and charged the ghouls with a desperate abandon. He prevailed in the end, but his wounds were fatal. However, as he lay there dying, that same impulse drove Vlad to tear out the throat of a dying squire and gorge on his blood. In that moment, primal, bestial power flowed through his veins. It healed, it healed Vlad's injuries and gave him strength, though the price was terrible indeed. Alone, he returned to the Duke's castle to find it ablaze, put to torch by the Templars of the Sacred Order. He knew already that the Esked family had harbored a dark secret. The blood of vampires ran through their veins, and the Duke wished to embrace it to save him from de death. Now the curse resided within Vlad. Disgusted and intrigued in equal measure, he turned aside and disappeared into the shadows. Yet his reign of terror had only just begun, and many bloody deeds awaited, including many clashes with his righteous brother Constantine. But this is a story for another night. Uh, I'm, pick I'm purposely picking out a team that has high elves on it, right? That way we can go ahead and steal that turn meter and test out the A2 going into the A3 to start things out here. So we're going to go ahead and again come in, remove bus, place that weaken from Ryan the Conjurer. Then we're going to come in with the A2. I want you to go ahead and slow things down and take a look at the turn meter fill here. Again, this is not new, but it's nice to get that turn meter all the way back to close to full. And we killed Foley and he gets back to back turns with another strong AoE. Constantine barely even gets a chance to go on this team and there it is block revive on everybody wow 
uh, really effective. Let's go ahead and face kind of a tankier team. We don't really have much here. Let's go ahead and refresh. Okay, this looks better, right? Okay, find a tankier team. So a tankier team, Kutraxa, uh, UDK, Brogni, I think will be good. Obviously, UDK is going to be in a stone skin. I can almost guarantee it. And there he is. So we're going against one stone skin. We have Bolster, which is protected. Not much that we can remove here with Ryan just to revive on death. But we're going to go ahead and come in with the A3. Try to land those debuffs, which we do. We're going to try to remove whatever we can here. And then come in with the... We don't get stone skin. Come in with the A2 here and nuke him down. And again, block revive on three of them. This one's already over. So really, really cool combination here right these two champions but even ryan like fits in very very nicely to this squad we do lose him there and i don't think udk is going to be able to take us all down we do have two revivers on the team which is nice as well about ryan the conjurer i said this before on the channel but i think ryan is is really underrated you know uh people compare her rightly so to madame saris because she has kind of the same removal. It is on a, uh, a, a three-turn cooldown rather than a four. Uh, but she has Weaken instead, again, of the... Uh, there we go. Nice job on the Quietude as well. Uh, she has the Weaken ability instead of... Ooh, another tankier team here. Perfect. Uh, decreased defense and decreased attack. Uh, but she also has that Revive on the A3, unlike Madam Saris, who has that Trick and Treats ability, which is good in its own right, but a lot different, those champions, too, even despite their similarities. Is that a, is that a weird thing to say? They're different despite their similarities. Uh, anyway, uh, here we go again. So we remove a couple buffs there. We're going to go in again. So we're going against, uh, what do we have here? Demon Spawn, Demon Spawn, Dark Owls. Okay, so none of the turn meter fills, so we're going to go A3. We do land, look at, lock active skills, block active skills, block active skills. Awesome. And then we're going to deny revival on whoever. Awesome. I mean, I have to say, really, really fun combination. Let's go ahead and pick another tanky, one or two more tanky teams. And then I wanted to actually do like a, just a regular difficult floor of Doom Tower. I want to put together like a really cool team with Vlad and Constantine on it and just see how we do here. Uh, but again, I mean, these speed teams just going to be a speed race here. So I don't think it's that exciting to go against. Uh, okay. How about this squad here? This is another good one here. I mean, a lot of super, super meta champions in the game. Let's see how we do. And again, I should have actually been on the lookout. I've done a better job, but you saw in the first match anyway, taking advantage of the back-to-backs. That's the really cool thing about this champion. But again, block active, block active, block active. I love the control with the debuffs there. Definitely a champion you can consider removing from your vault. Coming in again with the deny revival on everybody. Way to go, way to go, way to go there. Let's see, any other pretty formidable teams here? Not really. Nothing really that exciting. This will be my last refresh. Okay, look at this. They got damage mitigation on damage mitigation on damage mitigation. Who's your nuker, man? But you know what? You have like, you know, two, three revivers on the squad. Well, we got re deny revival, so we're not too scared, are we? We get resists on a, a couple of those. And again, nothing that we can take advantage of that A2 here for, but it doesn't really matter. Going to come in, block active skills. Going to come in with the big nuke. Uh, everybody besides Mithrala almost dead, but again, locked out for two turns thanks to that A3, so I don't think they're even going to get another shot at getting uh, Duchess to the point where she's able to revive. Well, she can't revive him anyway. <laughs> Block revive, Ash. Come on, bro. So again, I think, it's, I think Vlad is really enticing, and again, you do not need Constantine on the squad here. Can run any nuker, but I think it's a great setup, not just for that new A3, not just for the damage that he brings to the table, not just the fact that he's void affinity on to worry about negative affinity matchups, but the chance that he can have the back-to-back, -back, as we saw in that first match, A2 and A3. You know what? I, I'm, I'm, I'm lying to you guys. Another team, another team here with two champions from the factions that he can uh, steal turn meter. I want to see another back-to-back, -back. kind of a weak team, but I just want to see it again. Hopefully you guys don't mind. All right, so we're going to go in with the A2 this time. Hits harder. So we basically kill <laughs> we basically kill everybody, but at least we did get to take the multiple turn. Let's test out that hard hitting A1 here. Okay, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it kills uh, Bad Elkazar. So anyway, guys, very, very fun champion now. Very fun tandem. I do want to go in Doom Tower, not normal, but hard. Let me put the team together. I'll be right back. All right, guys. So I just Googled the uh 
I googled Doom Tower Floor, and 109 Hard was the first thing that popped up. Doom Tower Floor 1, huh? Someone having struggles with that one? <laughs> All right. Uh, this is the first one that popped up, so I'm at floor 109 on hard. Uh, let's just see how this team works out. I decided to use a, a couple fusions. We have Pythion and Mighty Uko on the team with Iron Brago in the lead defense of Doom Tower Battles by 34%. A little bit of extra defense there because, frankly, all of my champions are pretty low on the survivability. So if anything kind of gets to us here, that's going to be the issue. Hey, we're going against a bunch of, uh, a bunch of Pixels. So let's go in with a full turn meter and take back-to-back -back turns, start things out, get a leech on everybody, get the debuffs and the block active skills on everybody. Holy moly. Come in here with an A2 of Mighty Uko, place the block buffs on everybody because they have no buffs, and then we can come in with a, well, increased defense on everybody on Iron Brago. And let's do a, uh, well, we have no demon. I guess we just, we just burn an A1 here on Pytheon. And then let's come in with the big hit there man that's a big nuke for constantine these mobs level 295 they have they hit a lot harder than it looks like they do <laughs> a and b they only have their a1s right now because we locked them all down i love that control now on his aoe ability we're gonna just put it on auto here because god knows i'll take forever doing it myself but really excited to see these two champions together right especially again constantine and vlad but vlad is really impressive now man He's a champion definitely worth unvaulting for, I want to say, the majority of players who are watching this video. If you're super, super endgame, it might even be enticing to still give him a shot because he's a very unique champion now, having that A2 turn meter fill come in the A3, both three turns cooldown, block active skills, the control, the leech. You can see again there, looks like no turn meter fill. We got a little bit of 50% turn meter fill on that one, if I see correctly here. I'm trying to identify who's on these teams. So we have the newly buffed Virgum car, the newly buffed Pixniel. This is like the newly buffed team that we're going against here. Uh, with all apologies to Gurgo the Augur. Maybe this was not the floor 109 that people were having struggles with. Or maybe, maybe they were. But so far, this team is absolutely dominating. I can't wait to see the damage uh, of Vlad, you know, especially since he's not built to be an all-out nuker, although his stats are pretty dang good. You know, you guys saw the entire build portion of this video. I especially like, again, not to belabor the point here. But I especially love that that A3 has the block active skills with the decreased defense, you know, because just decreased defense on a three turn cooldown, that's not enough for avoid affinity champion anymore. Certainly avoid affinity legendary. There are a dime a dozen. There's a lot of those champions now. Back four years ago when I started playing this game, there weren't that many, you know, but now, I mean, you need more. So having that control, the block active skills on top of that, that makes him really enticing to me. Here we go on the third wave here again. A bunch of Norogs, and again, just more freeze and, and crap that we're going against here. Some damage mitigation with all those Norogs as well, but it looks like we're going to be just fine here. There it goes. Again, we landed that A3 block active skills on uh, pretty much, well, on everybody, and things are looking really, really good here. And I feel like this team, I don't want to speak out of turn here because obviously I haven't tried it, but I feel like this team could pretty much handle. We have two Revivers. We have increased defense. We have increased speed. We've got all of the damage and control that Vlad and Constantine bring to the table. We've got Block Revive. I feel like this team could pretty much handle every Doom Tower hard floor. Uh, maybe there'd be a couple exceptions, but it's a really, really robust, strong team. I know somebody out there in the comments has been asking for like a million days in a row for an Iron Brago guide. I'm trying to make that happen for you guys. You guys have overwhelmingly said that you want updated guides on older champions that, you know, a lot of people have. So previous fragment summons, fusions, stuff like that. So I'll try to make that happen here as I continue to, uh, you know, double upload when I can, when I have the time to do so. Obviously prioritizing time with my son and uh, family work and stuff like that. But uh, trying to put out as much content as I can for you guys. And hey, that's going to do it for the, uh, the video. I think you guys get the point, man. Like Vlad is is solid now. I do want to see his overall damage here compared to Constantine and the rest of the team because all these champions uh, have 100% crit rate and crit damage, all of them, uh, except for Pytheon, I want to say. But anyway, let's see what we did here. So uh, again, Constantine, not bad. Basically a little bit less damage than uh, Iron Brago. Uh, more damage, obviously, than, than Mighty Uko, but he's bringing all that control and debuffs as well to the table. Very, very compelling now. Uh, what do you guys think of Vlad? Do you think he's really as good as I'm saying he is? Are you as excited about this buff as I am? Let me have it in the comments below, guys. Thank you for watching, and as always, take care, guys.